Nick Nanos joins me now for our weekly segment, Nanos on the Numbers. And it's six months now since this government basically has been in power. We're looking back on the past six months and lots of people wondering, where are they at? How are they faring in the numbers? You took a look in terms of preferred prime minister, right? Justin yes. Trudeau. He is still a preferred prime minister after the election. There's no buyer's remorse happening here. Take a look at these numbers, 52%. Uh, wow, he is a country mile ahead of his competition with uh, Ms. Ambrose, who comes in at 16%. 15% are unsure. It's, wow, 5% ahead of Tom Mulcair's numbers. He's way down at 10%. Green Party at 5%, Bloc at 1%. Uh, Liberals have got to be pretty happy with these numbers. Well, exactly. We're six months into the Liberal mandate. They won a majority. Uh, their numbers have been holding. So... Uh, I know people hate using the H word, the honeymoon, and I think we're all tired, or some people might be tired of the honeymoon. But you look at these numbers, you know, one out of every two Canadians prefer Justin Trudeau as prime minister. Even factoring, you know, the situation where the Conservatives and the New Democrats are going into a leadership uh, process, these are still pretty good numbers. You can take these to the bank. So, uh, you know, a year ago it was Stephen Harper, now it's not. It is Justin Trudeau and uh, he's still riding high in the polls as the preferred prime minister. Is, is this normal, six months in, to still be seeing this kind of numbers? Is this typical that there is a six-month or year period, or is this something that's unique? Uh, and, and it is, you know, as people say, a Trudeau mania part two. Is that what's happening? Well, you know, what are we going to say if these numbers are still the same after a year, right? Right. You know, the reality is, is that after every election, you know, for the elections that Stephen Harper won, he was on a honeymoon for a couple months. Uh, but then his numbers started to adjust down. So uh, I think for Justin Trudeau, when we look at this trend line, it is unusual compared to other prime ministers. But I don't think we've ever had a situation where both parties have been submerged, immersed, whatever you want to call it, into a leadership race hmm. or leadership races. That's true. And that's probably, that's probably the curveball on these numbers, that the Liberals can look at them and that, yes, they're good, but they're probably a little more fragile than they would like. That makes sense. Well, let's switch gears to the economy because that's another way of telling how people are feeling about governance, about their lives. Uh, taking a look here, the blue is the pocketbook index, which is how people feel about their own bank accounts and financial security. The red is much more the government, the economy writ large. Uh, and both of those are coming up to Nick, 58% uh, percent there of people saying that they're feeling pretty good about their, their checkbooks. Uh, it's not fabulous, but it's a trend line that in both cases, cases on the government and their personal seems to be moving up. It doesn't seem to be dropping back down. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, on this uh, on this index score, the, the key thing is the red line, which are the expectations. That's the forward look on the economy. What mm. it shows is that over the last couple of months, people are becoming a little more uh, a little more optimistic. It's kind of like there was a, there were a lot of jitters when the price of a barrel of oil dropped, especially in the prairies. But uh, it looks like people are able to kind of digest that price uh, adjustment and that uh, expectations in terms of where they think the economy going is on the upswing over the last number of weeks in the Bloomberg Nanos tracking. So that probably adds to the generally positive frame that people have right now in terms of the prime minister, in terms of their personal finances, and also in terms of where they think things are going. Makes sense. Well, speaking of the prairies, let's take a look out there. Some pretty tough times lately, in particular for the people of Alberta. Not only did they have to suffer through the drop in the oil price and some of the unemployment that generated, also this terrible fire at, around Fort McMurray, uh, and there's additional fires on top of that, displacement, all kinds of chaos out there. Their usual sunny outlook still, but does that mean a sunnier outlook for the Liberals? Uh, the answer is yes. Look at this. The Liberal numbers are actually up in the prairies, 56% for the Liberals. The Tories are down, so there's been some question about whether the Prime Minister should have gone out there earlier. Is he doing enough? Should he do more? It looks like people are actually pretty happy with his response. Yeah, in the last couple of weeks, you know, this uh, the Nanos Party Power Index is a composite of ballot support and perceptions of the leaders. And this score out of 100 shows that the Liberals are actually trending up in the last three weeks. You know, they're still, you know, basically have this an equivalent score to the Conservatives. You know, this is a Conservative heartland. If the Conservatives don't have a slam dunk in the prairies, mm -hmm. then really the path back to power for the Tories will be very difficult. But what this suggests is that over the last three weeks, people have seen what the Liberal government has done and they've been incrementally improving and strengthening their brand score, at least in the prairie provinces, over the last couple of weeks as the government tries to engage people in the prairies in terms of this tragic fire. Nick Nanos, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week. Thank you.